and BK is back. This time it's actually Lyndon McBK of the Clan McBK. Long story, you should check it out. And again, you find me in the Nether. If you are a frequent Minecrafter, you may have seen Nembon's last gold farm. If not, you can find a link to a video about it in the description box below. Brilliant thinking by Nembon as usual, but there is a slight oversight. Let's first go through the farm itself. The concept is simple. Zombified pigmen spawn on a number of platforms. They detect the presence of turtle eggs, which they like to trample, so they try to run towards them, mistake trapdoors for full blocks and therefore fall down a shaft, where at the bottom they either die by fall damage or are saved by a honey block, allowing the player to manually take them down with a sword preferably one with looting on it to get more drops and obviously to get the XP. When Nembon designed the farm, he mainly focused on getting that XP. Since a player can only pick up a limited amount of XP orbs per second, there is no use in having more zombified pigmen beyond a certain number. As usual, Nembon's calculations are correct. To get the best rates of XP, you need to aim for 11 and 2 thirds of a second as the lifespan of the pigmen. Or to be precise, the average lifespan. And that would be the first issue. Nembon designed the spawning platforms in such a way that it would take the pigmen spawning on the very edges about the same time to get to the drop shaft. On paper, the proposed design is perfectly correct, but in reality, there are differences. If pigmen walked like players or humans, they would walk in a straight line towards their goal. But that is not the case in Minecraft. Mobs use a combination of two movements. Straight lines along the X or Z axis and diagonals that connect the horizontal movements. Considering pre-given conditions, the path that is chosen by a mob to get from one point to another is quote unquote optimal and is always the same if none of the conditions are changed along it. So to be certain of what we would expect to see happening and also just because BK is a number freak, I calculated what the exact path would be for every zombified pigment that would spawn anywhere on any of the spawning platforms of all possible sizes. Combining that data with a number of platforms to my own choosing, I can tell precisely what will be the average lifespan of the pigmen in said farm, down to the tick. While doing this, I am assuming that the spawning chances are almost the same, regardless of where in the farm they would occur, but in reality that is also not the case. By adding the glass and string around the top floor, you do allow for more pack spawns to happen, but this will also skew the spawn chances slightly to the outer sides of each platform. And technically, the precise location within chunks where you build the farm also has a very small effect on spawn chances, but those differences are so small that even I will ignore them. Keep in mind, the only reason why I know the differences are so small is because I did really calculate them and initially took them in account. For Nambon's design, the average lifespan from the exact moment in which the pigmen spawn down to the moment where they are ready to be slain by the player or just fall to their demise is 6.73 seconds. That leaves too much time for the player to swipe them with a sword. There will be an excess of XP, which will then have to be destroyed by that cactus. Now, I am sure that Nambon is also aware of the fact that his design produces more XP than what would be perfect. Technically, he could have made the spawning floors considerably bigger or add more floors, but it's a matter of finding a good balance between how many resources you want to put in making the farm, the volume of nether that you want to make spawn free, etc., while also making sure you don't try to fill up the mob cap further than the maximum. That would be completely pointless. There are some recommendations I could make if you were to use Nambon's brilliant concept of a gold farm. Firstly, on the very top of the farm. 
just place a glass block or any other block that prevents things from spawning on it on the topmost trapdoor of both drop shafts. Technically, adding this block will ever so slightly lower pack spawns in the immediate vicinity of the full column below it on each of the platforms, but this is immensely being compensated by the benefits. You lower the lifespan of 95.7% of all pigments spawning on the highest platform by a quarter of a second. The block actually keeps most pigments from jumping up before they fall, and that jump would have prolonged their lives by just a bit. Disregard the pattern of glass blocks that are there to prevent magma cubes from spawning and obviously also ghosts. There exists an even better pattern for this model, which actually would have increased the speed by which the spawns would have happened in the farm. But next we are going to make a little change to the shape of the platforms first. If we choose not to change the size of the platforms nor the number of them, that being 19 platforms with 210 spawning spaces each, a slight adaptation should be made in the shape to compensate for the exact time it will take pigment to move from where they spawn along their chosen path to the drop shaft. By using the exact number of spawning spaces as the original design, 210, the shape needs to look like this. This new shape actually improves the speed at which it will get the same results as the original. Yes, I know, this new design only has one axis of symmetry, whereas Nambons has two. The asymmetry is because of the grindstones on one side of the drop shoots. Pigmen turn the corner on that side slightly faster, so they have a shorter lifespan and are allowed to spawn just a bit further away to compensate for that. As I find the shape of the new platform a bit weird, what with those two bumps down there with only two blocks, I would propose one just a bit bigger with exactly 221 magma blocks on each platform. And to stop magma cubes from spawning, you can use this very appealing glass block pattern. This is already quite more efficient still. Excess XP will be destroyed, but you will get more gold from this farm. And for many players, that is the goal of making a zombified pigment farm. The drops. YouTuber Iskal85 made a larger version of Nembon's farm on the Hermitcraft server. His version only has 11 platforms, but they are bigger. How he got the design is actually a mystery to me, because whatever I tried, I could not figure out the reasoning behind them. It does not appear to follow Nembon's method, though it has got some characteristics from it. Also, Iskal may have made a little mistake while building the first platform and kept copying that mistake on all of the other floors as well. And so did another YouTuber who made a very good tutorial on that farm. Kinda made me smile seeing that. But Iskal wasn't wrong to make the spawning floors bigger. If you want more gold, you might as well increase spawns, as long as you do not fill up the mob cap. How to prevent that from happening depends on how many floors you want to make, and how low you can build the whole farm. And keep also in mind that the expected increase in spawns in relation to the amount of magma blocks you use will gradually diminish as you expand the size of the platforms. There are so many parameters for that problem that I am not going to include designs for optimal efficiency getting gold in this video, since this video is already <laughs> a bit too long. Yet, I will give you a shape that has about as many spawning spaces as Iskal's farm, but placed in the most speed efficient way. Iskal's 11 floors were each 490 magma blocks, this one uses 491 for each floor. And this is an efficient pattern of glass blocks above the top floor to prevent magma cubes from spawning. But take care, this is a special one. Normally you would put the glass blocks three blocks above the top floor, but as you can see I've marked out two red glass blocks to the left and right at the bottom. Those need to be kept where they are, meaning one block above the height of the topmost spawning floor. Exactly where I've marked them. This is a special case. There you go, finally another video. I can tell you that 2021 has not yet been what it should have. I've been doing too many things at the same time and none of them were actually planned. Luckily I managed to make this video and eventually there will be more, trust me. But for now, big kisses, bye.